Pooh's Grand Adventure, the search for Christopher Robin. Well, I'm reviewing another of the Winnie the Pooh franchise, but unlike Pooh's Grand Adventure, which was an end of an era, the Tigger movie began a whole new era of Pooh movies, television shows, and really it's put Pooh, Pooh's way in Disney into the modern era. Um, and this is sort of where it all starts. You know, the Tigger movie was so successful, but Piglet's big movie, uh, Pooh's Heffalump movie, then Pooh's Heffalump Halloween movie, then My Friends Tigger and Pooh, and then the Christopher Robin film. So really, it puts Winnie the Pooh in the second era of, of its time at, at Disney, as opposed to the time of the 60s to the late 90s. Uh, so the Tigger movie, what can I say about it? Well, it's always been, it's always, it's an entertaining film, but it's never been my favourite of the Winnie the Pooh movies. It used to be Pooh's Heffalup movie, but now that's been overtaken by Pooh's Grand Adventure, which has pushed the Tigger movie further down the pile than it was before. But it's, it's not a bad movie, um... And production of this film actually well it, it got off to a rocky start so production began in 1998 it was going to be called Winnie the Pooh and the Family Tree and uh, you know that I was talking about Paul Winchell uh, quite a bit the great Paul Winchell original voice of Tigger well Winchell was hired uh, for this for this movie um, and uh, he had one recording session and then was let go because his voice was too scratchy now at the time I thought reading back this article I thought Winch had been treated badly by Disney given his, his services not just voicing Tigger but doing voices in the adventures of Gummy Bears um, and uh, the Fox and the Hound and well his years voicing Tigger certainly um, so I thought he was badly treated however I listened I watched a television an old television special on YouTube that was the year just before the Tigger movie uh, called A Valentine For You now Paul Winchell actually did win a Grammy although I would disagree with that I think that Winchell's voice was weaker in that one and it's almost unbearable it's, it's high pitched it's lost some of the lisp and it's it's far too high pitchy and screechy it's really not nice to listen to and really hard you know Pooh's Grand Adventure it, it's bearable but by a Valentine for you his voice is just completely gone so I, I think that uh, I think that uh, Disney definitely did do the right thing in comes Jim Cummings now Jim Cummings had been voicing the character Tigger. Well, he alternated with Paul Winchell, starting with the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh in 1988, but recording sessions would have probably been in 1987. So he'd been voicing Tigger for quite a long time. And I must admit, I'm not keen on Cummings' as Tigger. Well, not now I can tell the differences between him and Winchell. For me, he doesn't have the warmth that Paul Winchell has. Um, and I'm certainly not keen on him singing but what Cummings really does shine is he managed to do the dramatic things that the things that you wouldn't expect Tigger to do you know is not just normal happy bounce yourself he really captures the vulnerable side and angry side of Tigger something that we've not really seen before in too great a detail so you've really got to afford him in the moment near the end when um, they're all telling him to come home uh, and he just shouts a great big no and just utter fury and it starts an avalanche and oh it really does get me goosebumps I'm not keen on Cummings as Tigger despite really having seen more of Cummings obviously than, than Port Winchell but the Tigger movie, he really does shine, portraying a side of Tigger that's been rarely shown. Um, 
The Tigger movie originally started as a direct-to-video film. Uh, it wasn't until Disney CEO heard the Sherman Brothers songs. Now, they were back to write the songs for Disney for the first time since 1971's Bed Knobs and Broomsticks because they had been sort of not liking the way the studio had gone since Walt Disney's death in 1966. So they came back, Michael Eisner heard the songs and thought, this is a really quality and let's upgrade this to theatrical release. And you know what, I agree with him. I think that the Tigger movie is definitely lots of theatrical quality. Um, the opening is a really humorous opening. It's sort of Disney taking the mick out of themselves because the original Pooh feature does of course started in a live action bedroom with Sebastian Cabot or Larry Main or whoever was the narrator saying this could be the room to any small boy but it just so happens to belong to a boy called Christopher Robin and well you know the rest uh, but here it's sort of uh, Tigger sort of uh, <laughs> appears and then uh, says all the stories about uh, that uh, silly old bear and then uh, the narrator played by John Hurt, who is criminally underused here, because I love John Hurt. Um, and he rearranges the words. It's, it's, it's actually quite clever. Actually. It's a really fun sequence. It's one of the best ones. He rearranges the words from Winnie the Pooh to make the Tigger movie. And to finish it off, it makes it orange. It's a really good sequence. Quite clever. And uh, yeah, really, really enjoy it. Uh, I always imagine, uh, imagine you know, if A. A. Milne came into the room and saw Tigger doing that, what are you doing to my, to my stories bounce off? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a really, really funny sequence, and it's one of the best. And uh, Disney would sort of call back to that when Rue would do the same for springtime with Rue, which I think had reused footage a tiny bit, uh, unless it had the same live action people, uh, I'm not really quite sure. Uh, the music is good, um, most of the songs are not the classic Sherman Brothers, it, well, they're not classic as in memorable, you know, you think of the scores to Mary Poppins, and almost all the songs are memorable. You know, you can just, the, the, the classics, you, you'd never forget them. But the Tigger movie, most of the songs that the Sherman Brothers wrote are quite forgettable. Um, you have, uh, I think, uh, six, six songs, I think. Uh, obviously, it reuses the wonderful thing about Tiggers, which they actually written for Winnie the Pooh the Bluff Three Day, the second of the uh, feature debts uh, in 1968, because the Sherman Brothers had been around for the original Pooh movies, so it's quite fitting to have them uh, sort of um, return. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven original numbers counting the wonderful thing about Tiggers. Um, so the first one we have is Someone Like Me, which is sort of like a little bluesy song. Tiggers basically feeling left out and, uh, you know, he can't seem to do anything right and no one wants to bounce with him. So he sings it with some forest animals. Uh, then you have the whoop de doop -a bounce Now this is a really Sherman Brothers song. You know, it's fast. It uh, plays with words. It's it's a very Sherman Brothers type of. If you think of uh, Super Califragilisticexpialidocious from Mary Poppins and Fortuosity by Tommy Steele from The Happiest Millionaire, little known film there. Um, so yep. Then you have Pooh's Lullaby, which is quite funny. Pooh basically singing a lullaby to the bees to basically get him to get them to sleep to obviously, well, steal their honey. Uh, Round My Family Tree, this is a big number. Uh, it, it basically has a, a Disney acid sequence in the way, uh, you know, Dumbo, Pink Elephants on Parade. It sort of, it, it transports you, so 
you 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 basically forget that you and you're sort of hearing you you're seeing what Tigger's thinking in his mind basically that's the uh, a real good thing I think to use in animation because it tells you what the character is thinking and and you get to see inside their brain that their, their imagination um so that's what I'd say for that and uh, yeah there's lots of references which I wouldn't have got at the time uh, Marilyn Monroe <laughs> that's quite scary think about that now uh, Jerry Springer I think lots lots and lots of references that I'm sure uh, if adults are watching the kids they will they will get it uh, the next one is how to be a Tigger which is uh, quite a good one when basically uh, Tigger's friends all buy Tigger costumes to try, well, to try have be Tigger's family. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's good. The final song is Your Heart Will Lead You Home, and it's quite fitting to be performed by a guy who actually had an album, I think, called Welcome to. Poo Corner, I'm I'm pretty sure, or, or had a had a song called. Um, let me just find the the uh, the song. Right, right. It's not not in any of these. Mm, right. Okay. Uh, right. Well. Um. Well, I I think it's Welcome to Poo Corner. Right. Return to Pooh Corner. There we go. Um, so yes. Uh, oh right, Health at Pooh Corner. That's right. So Kenny Loggins originally had a song called Health at Pooh Corner. Um, Pooh Corner, uh, and then of course he would do a children's album called Return to Pooh Corner. And then more songs at <laughs> Pooh Corner. So it's quite fitting for a guy who, well, did a lot of songs from movies, but also had a sort of connection with Winnie the Pooh to perform the song. And it's the only time the Sherman Brothers would collaborate with someone else. And you think the Sherman Brothers, with their background, and Kenny Loggins' pop rock background, you think that's a sort of weird... Uh, combination on paper but it's a really really good song and I think it should have definitely won an award Your Heart Will Lead You Home because I think it's a brilliant song and I don't I used to love Carly Simon's songs like with a few good friends from Piglet's Big Movie and the song she did for Pooh's Heffler movie but actually I well I I, I, I don't know I mean it's it's tough. Um, well, I, I, I like both of them, uh, and it's it's funny because <laughs> I knew the song but didn't know who sang it for a very very long time until finally looked it up, and uh, yeah, Kenny Loggins, and then of course from that I discovered more of Loggins' songs, Danger Zone from uh, Top Gun, Footloose from from Footloose. Uh, and uh, I'm all right from from Caddyshack. So yeah, this is a guy that's done a lot of film uh, songs, and so he's he's kind of perfect for, like I said, the uh, the the two reasons. Um, so basically, the whole idea of this film is uh, Tigger basically, um, well, you know, Ru asks him, does he have a family? And then they decide to go for to go to Al's house and Al talks about a family tree and then Tigger gets this whole idea to basically find his family tree and find his family and uh, the wonderful thing about Tigger is I mean the, the the thing is Tigger is initially happy that he's the only one but it's when he discovers it's lonely that uh, and in fact that song was actually uh reprised again in quite a quite a dark way uh yeah which is quite quite strong for Winnie the Pooh but uh well yeah I mean um yeah it's definitely uh it's definitely uh 
uh, a big song and uh, this is actually the first time that uh, the wonderful thing about Tiggers um, is sung because the Sherman Brothers wrote a couple of lines which obviously were probably cut due to timing. Tiggers are comfy first, Tiggers are off, sweet, everyone else is just and that's why I repeat. Um, they say that on a Tigger tell, the behind the scenes, that this is the first time no one had heard that. But actually, Richard Sherman got that wrong because for the Disney sing-along videos, Paul Winchell recorded a version, re-recorded a version in, in either 89 or 90, so it wasn't the first time. The Tigger Tale, that's something I really enjoy. I'm not sure if that's on Disney+, Plus, but it's really interesting to hear what the people that make this movie, you know, talking about the art styles and, uh, you know, the, the, the thing about uh, the lines on Tigger, which I never noticed because... E. H. Shepard, the illustrator for A. A. Milne's original books, well, they have that they, they have a very signature uh, drawings of lines, so they wanted for Tigger to move to, to sort of nod to that with with the lines, which I thought was very very interesting, um, and uh, yeah, it yeah just things like that. It just uh, tells you that uh, they they care. Um, Yes, it says 28 years, first one for the show, brothers, wow. Um, now the songs, uh, well, not really my cup of tea, most of them, but I tell you what I do love, ho, 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 the score. Oh, Harry Gregson Williams, whoa. Do you know, he could be John Williams' successor because the score he gives here is just it's brilliant. It's, it's it, I just love it, all the... The action and even the quieter moments, it's just, it's absolutely fantastic. The score, I think, is one of the best things uh, about this. I, I don't know if you would agree, uh, but um, yeah, yeah, I, I just love the score. I think it's just brilliant, you know, from the beginning and, oh yeah, it's just really epic. Um, now, the director, Young Foxy. It's kind of interesting because she began, well, you know, this is her first time filming a, a proper, directing a proper film and the screenplay. And the first theatrical film that she's done in a big role. That's a huge risk to take. But luckily it paid off and like Josh Cooley did with Toy Story 4, which I said was a risk at the time. That worked even though Toy Story 4 I ended up not really liking. Um, but yeah, Jan Falkenstein does, uh, Jan Falkenstein does a very, very good um, job in this movie. Even though it's never been my cup of tea, really. It's, full, it's never been high on my list. It still is a very good movie. It's definitely theatrical quality. Maybe even more than Pooh's Grand Adventure. Uh, the search for Christopher Robin, although you know that to me is now my my favourite Winnie the Pooh film, and I I just think that film is just wonderful. Uh, like I said, um, and it's quite funny seeing on the credits that uh, Yoko Ono. I, I presume that isn't John Lennon's husband. Uh, well, y Yoko Ono is a is generally uh, um, probably a typically Japanese name, probably. And given that Walt Disney Animation Japan, um, yeah, I mean, but yeah, you, it, it, it's always quite funny to think that uh, I think, hey, I did, uh, did, 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 did John Lennon's wife uh, appear on this? But and I think it well, thank, thank goodness that she didn't. Uh, didn't sing, <laughs> I was sort of joke to myself. Oh, right, so she's an in-between artist. She's an animator. There we go. I thought she was. <laughs> right. Uh, right, okay, I think that is, that's a wrap. Um, I thought that was particularly good. I did stumble, actually, quite well, so I'm particularly very proud of this uh, because... 
I didn't um, Pooh's Grand Adventure. I ended up sort of stumbling a bit, and uh, but no, no, now I'm very, very pleased with this. Um, and yeah, I really, really uh, enjoyed this. Um, hopefully, you have too. So we've got three more episodes to go. Next episode, I'm going to be reviewing Frank and Ollie. And ooh, let's end with a end with a classic. I think I'm going to do Toy Story, the first ever feature-length computer-generated animated film. That if it gone wrong, it could have flopped badly. But it was a massive success. Pixar is now known all over the world and is now successful. So Toy Story really laid the seed to another great company, which Disney would later buy <laughs> itself. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to, like, share, comment, and subscribe to the Lightning... Uh, no, sorry, no, not the Lightning Born YouTube channel. Uh, buffoon. <laughs> the Tube Mix.